did it courtesy of a 26 and change final 200. Looked like he was out of this race. Looked like this was going to be the Klecker show, which is what we thought. Keep in mind also, Kincaid, between training groups right now, not with Bowerman currently. So he was not getting a lot of attention pre-race and comes in and runs one of the fastest indoor 5,000s in history. Yeah, and if you watch the last few laps of this race, Klecker looked like he was struggling, but still closed well. Klecker won still 12.54. So Klecker still runs a great race. But you think if Klecker's not in this race, does Woody have that motivation to really wind up in this final, you know, 300, 500 meters to close in 26 seconds in the final 200 to get to 1251. I think Klecker was like this. He's a the, rabbit. His presence was like yeah. a rabbit for the American record. Yeah, he helped pull him along. How many sure. people have a rabbit through basically 4,800 meters? Well, no, 4,900 meters, basically. Well, this is what we've seen, though, from other time trial type races at BU or other Bowerman type races where the rabbit would be more intentional, but they'd literally step off with a K to go. This was legit competition between two people not on the same club. But I think you're right. It helps squeeze a couple extra seconds out, out of Kincaid for sure. But just the fact that he was in the mix and there and able to, to utilize his kick was, was the big story. Prior to, prior to this race, we were putting the over-under at 13.05. Yeah. Way and off. you were going with the over. Yeah. Thinking, oh, they might just run to the 13.0 something <laughs> or 13 teens. That's very different type of race than attempting to break an American record, mm -hmm. especially this early. I mean, Grant Fisher broke the record 12.53 at this meet, but not this exact weekend. Mm -hmm. It was later on in the season. So for Woody to do it, still in January, he's clearly fit. And this is what I thought. It is kind of ironic or a weird situation where the first race for Woody Kincaid after potentially – he's not 100% leaving Bowerman. He yeah. still said he might go back. Well, he's, he's looking at his options. He's been training with Mike Smith's pro athletes for the past month or so. His first race, he goes out and breaks his potentially former teammate's record, Grant Fisher, yeah. on that track. It's a big – this is definitely one of those situations. It's like, you know, you go through a breakup, and then you get, you like, get, your, your, you get your, your shit together, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa. <laughs> um, do you think Jerry's like – because apparently Woody was quoted saying like – um. Oh, you're gonna throw away your career if you leave. Yeah, that that quote looks kind of bad when throwing away your career is running two seconds faster than any American has ever run in an indoor 5K. Whoa, that quote also is the ultimate motivation. Yeah, that's like out of a movie. I didn't think people actually talked like that. Like that's very. <laughs> I'm gonna motivate the main character by telling him I don't believe in him. But in this case, the mo the main character is already one of the fastest guys in the country. I thought it was, yeah, the timing was just like, okay, this is a statement. I don't know. I mean, if you're working with Mike Smith, do you get, I'm assuming you get access to the Mike Smith pep talks? Probably. Right? So that, does that, is that responsible for a couple seconds? What we know about Schumacher's training, which isn't like a ton because he doesn't talk a lot, but it is very rigid, right? It's like, hey, he's got, which I get it. And you got kind of get a Belichick vibe. From him, right? Like, this is our program. This is what we do. The Patriot way. People are going to come in. They're going to work hard. Um, and, but I don't bend from this system that I have. Okay. And it obviously led to great results for a lot of runners. But it's not going to be for every runner. And it's not going to be for every runner their entire career. And it feels like Kincaid identified something. And maybe, you know, it was precipitated by the group moving to Eugene. But he identified something of, hey, Maybe I can tweak a little bit here, a little bit there. We're dealing with such small margins, right? If Woody Kincaid runs 12.56 in this race, it's still a huge and, – and Klecker runs 54 and beats him. It's still a huge result, right? But we're not, we're not talking about the, the Woody Kincaid statement race. So a few seconds here, a few seconds there, a couple tweaks, changing a workout there, getting in a slightly different headspace. It makes all the difference in the world at this level, and sometimes that's, that's all it takes. I'm I'm surprised Schumacher said that too because I feel like it's almost in a way not giving himself enough credit as a coach, being like, "Hey, I I set you up, you know, I built you for success. Like wherever you go, man, you're gonna be great, right?" He he sets it up as just like there's only one path, you know, to success for you at this point. 
and it's and it's continuing on this program. It's like, no, he's experienced. Woody knows what a workout is. Woody knows how to race, clearly. Like he knows He knows like, how to do mile repeats. Right. Or I was it it was tempo runs, right? Okay. Like the the mics the double tempo runs. I read that in, in John's article afterwards, which is like the difference in training. But I mean, part of it's probably just like a little bit of a mentality shift. Part of it's having a fresh start. Part of it's maybe having a tiny bit of extra motivation and just having a different routine. Like all that stuff matters. But yeah, I'm surprised. He just just put like a bulletin board up for him in his bedroom and then nailed on the most motivational statement he could say by saying, this is, this is not going to be good for your career. Now, do you think there's going to be a, a response from like a Grant Fisher at this indoor season? We don't know yet. If Fisher's even going to run indoors, he's not signed up to go in any of the big like Milrose, New Balance, Grand Prix type meets. There has been thoughts that maybe potentially the Bowerman guys <laughs> would run at BU, maybe at Valentine or that BU last chance end of February. Uh, but there's going to be definitely now a little bit of eyes on the performances of mainly Grant Fisher because he's like, all right, former teammate goes out, yeah. breaks your record. What's going to be your response? They're probably going to underplay and be like, it's not about that. We're just focusing on making a team and well, doing I'm sure they're still the right process. And they're, they're still friends. I mean, Grant's literally like one of the nicest people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of just – it's it's it was surprising. It's, fun. it's funny. I think it's funny. It's like guy leaves, breaks the record, well, this first sort, race back. It reminds me of when um, Ritz switched coaches and then you broke the 5,000 record like two months later or something yeah. like that. I mean, it's a very quick turnaround. You're like, oh – who gets the credit, the new coach or the old coach? Yeah. It's like, well, maybe they had it in them all along, right? And and there was a little bit of improvement by being in a new situation, or maybe it took some of the pressure off. Like, to me, I think that's part of it. Maybe some of it's just like, because we certainly, we were saying Clucker. Yeah. And why were we saying Clucker? I mean, the really only reason we were saying Clucker was consistency. Consistency, and we knew he was, yeah, he was with the same group, and On was doing really well, and all this other stuff. But it's like, Woody's the guy who keeps making teams. Woody's the guy with the ridiculous kick. And I did say, didn't I say Woody is the guy who's like living on like the third floor with the chance to go up to the, like the skyscraper ceiling. Like he has that highest ceiling, but Woody still can put up a few duds. But when he doesn't put up a dud, he puts up an American record because Woody's ceiling is so much higher than I think a lot of these other top guys. Because the what, kick, because the kick, because of saying? his kick. Yeah. But the problem is, like, you got to be in it to use the kick. You got to be in it, and you're not always going to be in it. So there yeah. might be a time when Woody could have a great kick, but he's not in it, so you don't see the value there. Uh, but man, Woody now, like, who you taking straight up in well, in like a uh, 5K in the summer? You taking Grant or you taking Woody? I mean, I'm still rolling with I'm still rolling with Grant because ultimately this was still time trial type setup. True. But I'm gonna bring up something, Drew Hunter said at the armory over the weekend when he was asked you have 15 or five what are you going for he's like the 5k team's impossible to make so he's going to the 1500 because the 5k team's impossible to make and then you dig in you're like oh yeah let's see they just had a 1251 and a 1254 in bu which doesn't even take into account fisher doesn't even take into account chalimo right doesn't take out cooper tier right he decides to do it right doesn't take about abdi hamineur I think like, I think you're going to see a mass exodus to the 1500 with people who are able to do it, and I think anybody who can find their way into the 10k is going to be super happy that they locked up that spot. But the 5k people and the 10k people, by and large, are the same. So yeah. if Woody Kincaid's in 1251 shape, what is he in in 10k shape? I mean, he's going to be fine, right? And now he seems. Here's the thing, because I know Kincaid had a lot of you saying, "Oh yeah, I'm not sure like where I'm going to go." I mean, doesn't this sort of answer the question? Yeah. Where you're gonna go? Unless he's like forced for some reason to like pick a lane. But don't you stay where you're at? Yeah. I mean, you you go to Nur or whoever and Nur and Grahalva, right? Is yeah. that who you're, you're training with? Like you're, you're my new buds. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if you signed up for this, but I just ran twelve fifty one, so I'm gonna keep literally everything the same. 